Hi, I'm Travis, uh, production manager here at Zenith Aircraft, and if you guys want to come with me, we'll take a little tour. So we're going to head over here to the part shelves, kind of give you an example. We have uh, a lot of parts on the shelves pretty much all the time. When we're doing our manufacturing, we do uh, batch manufacturing, so we make, say, 50 of one part or 20 of one part and then move on to the next part rather than making one airplane per week or two airplanes per week, that type thing. Um, so anytime you guys need a part on uh, shipped out UPS or mail, we usually will have that in stock and ready to go uh, same or next day. This is an area where we do a lot of our uh, picking and packing for the crates. Um, you can see we've got a couple of large crates there that are uh, going overseas, that's why they have the plastic inside of them to help the, the moisture stay out that's exposed on the ships. We put all the parts in cardboard boxes. We add bubble wrap, foam, uh, that sort of thing in order to protect all the parts and have them a little bit more organized for you when you get them and are going to be checking out your uh, pick list inventory. We'll have a quick look in here and you can see how much care we take in packaging this stuff. Again, we've got all of our uh, long skins under the bottom covered in cardboard. We've got different parts organized and even written on the boxes what's in them, aluminum parts or steel parts, hardware, plastic, etc. Take a lot of extra care in regards to uh, wrapping in foam and securing large items such as the cabin frame so that it can't shift. This whole crate, once finished, will be stuff full of paper and air pillows to lock everything into place and make sure it doesn't shift during the shipping. Yeah, so this is Robin, he's our uh, lead shipping person and the one kind of responsible for, for running this shipping area. So this is Dalton, uh, he's our quality control person at the moment. He also does a lot of um, drafting and R&D work for uh, making the match drilled parts fit. But um, you can see he's checking the parts. Every part that is manufactured here at Zenith comes across this quality control table and it's checked for whatever's important about that part. Obviously metal thickness, if it has the correct angles, when it's rights and lefts, if it's the right orientation, does the part look good and meet the standard that, that we uh, have here at Zenith Aircraft. Once the part meets the quality control, it will be labeled. And that is our quality control stamp. And so you'll see every uh, label is going to have a part number, which also references to a section of the builder's guide or the drawings. So the SD75 is going to indicate that that's a Super Duty 750 part. And then the H is going to indicate that it's a horizontal tail part. And that would be page one and item four. So and you'll have a description and a little bit of other information there on the label. So we have a couple of uh, CNC routers here at Zenith that we use to cut out about 99% of all the aluminum parts. Um, they're programmed and when the cycle start button hits, they pick up the, the tool necessary for the operation. They do that work, they'll automatically change the tool and advance through the entire program until the whole sheet is processed. Uh, if you have a look here at the router, you can see that our new one here has uh, two cutting heads, so the work is obviously done uh, twice as fast. The material on the routers are held down by a vacuum pump, and the vacuum actually comes up right through the bottom of the board, and it holds the material down quick and easy access on and off. It also reduces flutter in the part, so when we're cutting these thin materials, uh, the cut quality is very good. It's able to be taken right off the router, and it's just as smooth as could be. Back here we build uh, a lot of the crates, whether they go out uh, for UPS or for large full kits like this. Uh, we use two by four plywood construction. Uh, air nailers and screw guns. We do leave at least one end and the lid with screws only to make it very easy for uh, customers to access their parts. If they're not able to unload the truck, you can easily take the top and the end off and unpack it by hand. 
uh, which is really nice for those that doesn't have a tractor or forklift, that sort of thing. Um, also, I just want to mention, while we do provide a very good shipping crate, uh, customers are always more than welcome to come to the factory, visit us here, and pick up your kit or parts of kit and take it home with you. Uh, this is Brian, and Brian is uh, a great builder here at Zenith. So this is a little bit of our uh, hardware area, and we just offer a very complete kit here. Um, we're not one that provides a kit and then say, oh, by the way, you need to go buy these bolts from somewhere else or whatever. We, we supply everything you need to complete your airframe. We have lots of bolts in stock, pins, hoses, wires, rivets, and we use a, a riv rivet that is custom made just for us to meet the specifications uh, for our airplanes and then the, the application that we call out. So this is just a quick view of a, of a hardware box, at least the way we supply it. So it's going to say right on it, Cruiser Airframe Hardware Box. And when you open it up, you've got a map on the top side as to what it is, how many there are in each compartment, and how well things are organized. And that way it's a lot easier for you to, when you start your build and, and get to a point where you need to use some hardware, but not all of it, you're not wondering where it fell out of the hole in the bag that you ripped open, and you can just keep it in here through your build process until you've used it. So again, we have a really good inventory of pretty much everything needed for our kits. Um, so anytime you want to call up and uh, order something UPS, whether you're buying it a piece at a time or you need a replacement part, um, we're ready for pretty immediate ship most of the time. This is a aluminum rack we have here at Zenith. We range in aluminum thickness from 16 thousandths of an inch all the way up to a quarter of an inch thick. The thicker items we order in with uh, PVC coating on both sides to help protect it as we're taking it off the rack uh, or handling it through the shear or onto the router. The thinner material is all paper interleaf, which means that it has uh, a piece of paper between each sheet. And that way, again, it is protected as it comes here from, from uh, its destination, whether it be here in the States or in Europe. And then we're able to handle the stuff and get it off the rack without uh, causing damage to it. The paper is then used to be added in for the packing material, so we're getting a double use out of that. All the material is 6061 T6 bare aluminum, and that's really the only aluminum that we use for uh, for the kits. Also, we do have um, mill test reports on every material that comes into our shop. Uh, I've been here 27 years. We've never had a recall on material, uh, but we always are able to find that material and track it back to the original mill and every step there in between the, uh, from the mill through our manufacturing and to the quality control process and onto your pick list for those critical parts that we feel like we may ever need to. This is a large CNC shear. Uh, it's, a, it's essentially a big pair of scissors. This is a CNC press brake. Um, it's responsible for bending all of the parts. Um, it uses a lot of different die setup. I have some parts with very minimal clearance, so I would use a special gooseneck punch for that. As you can see here, this is a short punch that's set up for the application of doing this final bend in between these two parts. This part came off of uh, the CNC router. Uh, we have punched the lightning hole in this one. Um, just due to clearance issues, um, it can't be done after it's bent. So now these parts are ready uh, for the CNC press brake. And again, when they're finished being bent, um, they will be a 100% match drilled part uh, to fit your application with no extra work needed. So this is Richard, and Richard is going to demonstrate how some of our parts are pressed. What he is making there is a elevator tip rib. This is Mark, and Mark is uh, one of our rib finishers. So once the parts are pressed in whichever 
application they're pressed in, they come across Mark's table. He is going to check that it fits perfectly so that you don't have to do anything to it before you install. Now Richard is going to demonstrate um, a different style of pressing parts that we have that we're able to do on some of our applications and that really depends on the shape uh, of the part. But this is a, a large press with a urethane block in the top. He's going to put the blank on the male form block and the urethane becomes a universal female that fits any shape that you put into it. Now he's going to push the button and I have the machine set up on an automatic cycle so that it will rotate up. It will build the pressure and hold it for as long as we tell it to and then return back to the point we tell it to. The benefit of that is the operator can be getting the next part ready to go in and you can just put one part in, take the other one out, recycle, and while the machine's running, we're doing other work to maximize our productivity. So here at Zenith, you're going to hear us talk about CNC and, and fancy equipment, but we like to use the right tool for the job. And some of our technology has been around for 100 years, uh, but it is the right tool for the right application. So I'm going to have Richard show you how we produce a lightning hole and how quick and easy it is. aligning a tooling hole position from the CNC with a spring-loaded pin and in one stroke he's going to punch the hole and flange the hole at the same time. And again these are referred to as lightning holes but primarily they are strengthening holes. They make these parts very strong and rigid while reducing a little bit of weight. Okay guys, so you can meet John. He is uh, our primary welder here at Zenith Aircraft. Um, John is very skilled. If you look in at those welds, you'll, you'll agree with me, I believe. So we do TIG welding here at Zenith. That's known as tungsten inert gas, or for um, some old timers might refer to it as heliarc. Um, it is the most pure form of welding for this application. What you're looking at is an aluminum fuel tank. This is considered a long range option for a 750 stole. The tank ends are formed, uh, cut on the CNC and then formed, uh, along with the skins that are cut on the CNC and bent in the press brake. Also, if you look here on the wall, you'll see we have uh, certain fixtures that holds all of the individual parts together to make up the welded assembly that John's gonna weld them in. Uh, we weld our parts 100% in the fixture so that we don't have any warping and everything fits exactly the way it should when you receive it. This is a more finished fuel tank and you're able to see now that we have uh, some of the fittings welded in. So uh, the fittings are typically a CNC machined threaded part so this adapts the filler neck to it. We also have the uh, MPT threads that allows your fuel fittings to go in for a fuel return as well as uh, the fuel outlets and along with a drain. Notice the bead rolled along the ends. This is to add a lot of rigidity to the skin and stop vibration so that removes any pressure from the weld. So we've got tanks that's been out there for 30 years uh, and they don't crack. Once the tanks are welded, they're brought down for a pressure test. Uh, in order to get a good proper test, it's important that we use at least three and a half pounds of air. In order for us to put three and a half pounds of air, it doesn't sound like much, but that's pounds per square inch. There's a lot of square inches here, so it's a lot of pressure. In order to get that test done properly, we have to put them in a cage that allows us to hold the shape of this tank while having that much air. Then a soapy glycerin solution is sprayed around the entire tank to check all of the welds, make sure they don't leak. If there are any leaks, they're marked, taken back to the welder, he repairs them, 
We don't assume he fixed it. We retest it. When this test is, is when this tank is finished being tested, they're going to write the date and the initial of the tester on it. And that's something I'm really proud of here at Zenith. How we're every employee is literally willing to sign their name to the quality of work they're doing. Okay guys, so that's just a snapshot of what we're doing here at Zenith Aircraft and if we've sparked an interest or you're thinking you'd like to build a Zenith Aircraft, I would really like to see you come in and take a, a full tour and get familiar with everything here at Zenith as well as all the employees. Um, we are a very small family uh, type environment and again, everyone would be welcome to come in and, and have a look and make up your own mind about us after you've been here.